Hey guys, how's it going? I know I can't see you, but you can see me, so nice to kind of see you. Uh, yeah, this is our first video lesson while we're um, kind of making the best of the uh, coronavirus quarantine and all, all of this stuff. Um, you know, and thank God that he created people with knowledge so that, you know, virtually we can hang out, we can meet, we can, you know, we can Skype, we can do all of these things. And um, later on, we'll, we'll, we can, I want to get some of your guys' feedback on it, but we can do like a, we can do like a, a Zoom uh, group chat meeting where we can all see each other. You can use a computer or a tablet. Um, in my experience, the phones didn't work out that well, but we can talk about that another time and then maybe we can kind of meet as a group. Um, via zoom or something or another like that um i'm gonna do a little more research and play around with it a little bit more and maybe we can do that um you know we don't have the ability to connect together in person right now but technology is kind of keeping us in touch like this right now uh, which is great it's awesome um, i've been able to kind of stay in touch with a lot of you via texting or some of you guys, we've been playing video games every few nights er, during the evenings and stuff, and it's been cool to hear from you guys and just see, yeah, you know, you guys are doing all right. It's it, it's kind of strange to me that, you know, life is just on hold right now. You know, I never would have expected anything like this to happen, and, um, you know, it's school's been out. You guys have been out of school for a little bit longer, and then this statewide or, uh, shelter-in-place order went out, so... Life's a little different right now. We haven't quite experienced anything like this yet. Um, and I'm sure, like myself, you know, at times you guys have been going a little bit stir-crazy, trying to find stuff to do and wanting to get out of the house. You know, it sounds insane to be outside of the house or, or to be inside the house all the time. And you're thinking, you know, and it's only been a little over, it's been, this is your guys', this is, I think, second week out of school now. Um, not not meeting for school, doing school online, and this is this is oh, we're going on about a week now of shelter in place order, which is crazy. And you're thinking, you know, how am I going to do this for a few weeks or a month or however long this is supposed to go on? And I'm believe me, I'm I'm there, I'm with you. I'm there. I'm thinking, man, this is going to be. I, I want to go out and do stuff. I'm I'm confined here to. Uh, Jessup and like just going out to go get groceries and that's about it like I'm not doing anything right now this is nuts uh, and you know I'm somebody who's not the most patient so waiting for this shelter in place order to be lifted waiting for the coronavirus and all of this stuff to stop is is rough <laughs> and, it, and I'm sure for some of you guys you know you guys have been experiencing this in a sense a little bit longer than I have with school being out already and all of this uh, so patience is kind of what I want to focus on today. Um, just in this time, patience is huge right now. It can be very easy to get, you know, just feel kind of confined and feel trapped in our in our homes and only be able being able to go to the store when we need to go buy food, and that's about it. Um, so I wanted to focus on that today just because that's kind of an aspect of life that we're having to really deal with right now. I had a mentor who always said that, you know, when you pray for patience, God doesn't just give you patience to just deal with everything. He gives you opportunities to be patient. So I don't know who's been praying for patience this couple of weeks, but I'm sure they're having to exercise it quite a bit, especially if they live in California, because this is taking some serious patience. Um, and especially during something difficult, it can be hard to be patient. Um, so if you guys have your Bibles with you while you're watching this, uh, turn to Ephesians chapter four. Uh, we'll be looking at verses one through three, and that's Ephesians chapter four, verses one through three. I'm going to go ahead and read it here. I, therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the peace in the bond of uh, unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Sorry, I am tired this uh, this afternoon, so I am stumbling over words today. Um, so the Apostle Paul wrote this. Uh, he wrote this to, to the church in Ephesus, which was within the Roman Empire. Ephesus was originally a Greek city, just a little history for you guys. Um, and it stood the test of time. Multiple empires had come in and conquered the area and conquered the city. Um, the Persian, the Medes and the Persians, Alexander the Great, and then Rome um, all had conquered this city. But throughout that, the city stood the test of time and was left in portions preserved. 
Um, and one of the things that was con constantly preserved was this temple. And this was a temple to a, Gre to the Gre to a Greek goddess who also coincided to be like a, a Roman goddess as well since their gods were similar just kind of by different names. Uh, so at the time Paul is writing this, the Roman Empire is in power. So the Roman Empire is the superpower. They have all of the roads and all this stuff. Rome built roads connecting everything in the empire. Um, Rome, because of how the Roman Empire worked, it was very diverse. It wasn't just like separate people groups everywhere. So in Ephesus, especially, and, and this is all in, you can find the ruins of Ephesus in modern day Turkey today. So it's outside of Israel where Jesus uh, did his ministry outside of Jerusalem and Galilee and all of that. This is a separate town, another country entirely. Um, so being outside of Israel, unlike a lot of the other places, Ephesus wasn't mostly Jewish, um, but instead it was made up of several people groups because the Roman Empire liked to mix things up and they liked having all of this diversity within their groups. So you had Greeks, you had Roman citizens, you had Jews as well. Um, the Jews actually stirred up a ton of trouble for Paul. If you read through uh, Acts, when Paul is in Ephesus, the Jews start a riot um, and, and Paul gets attacked and beaten and all kinds of stuff happens. Um, Ephesus was also a major city for the slave trade. Um, and slave trade was huge, so they had a ton of wealth. This was a wealthy city. Um, like I said, it was, mentioned, it was known for this huge temple to a Greek goddess, and at the time, it was, it was kinda, that temple was seen as like a wonder of the world, so people would make a pilgrimage to Ephesus just to go see this awesome landmark. Um, so there's lots of people, lots of religion, and all kinds of wealth in Ephesus. And the whole book of Ephesus is a shorter book, um, but it's full of instructions um, that Paul gives on kind of how to live as Christians and follow God. And ultimately, Paul had planted this church with the help of other apostles and uh, Christians. Paul had planted this church and would visit it from time to time. At this point in time, he's in Rome. He's in prison, so he's writing these letters out. Um, so, you know, he wrote all of these different letters that made up the New Testament, which we've talked about millions of times. You guys got this, got this info down. Um, you know, and while you guys are home, Ephesians would be a great book to read um, while you have some newfound time on your hands. Uh, any one of the letters that Paul wrote, really, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, and Colossians especially are all shorter books. First and Second Timothy are shorter books. Be great ones to read through and like reread. And if you guys, if, if highlighting is your thing or if underlining is your thing in your Bible, underline and highlight the things that stick out to you, but use a different color of pen or marker each time um, because you'll find, you'd be surprised how many little nuggets of wisdom and just things that would like blow your mind in your faith and just like things about God that you would have like been like, oh, that's awesome. Um, so you should do that. Um, it's a great thing to do. Uh, but back to, back to patience and back to all of this. So in the context that Paul wrote this letter in giving this, uh, this instruction of being at peace with each other and having patience and all of these different things that he listed in verses 1 through 3. They are living within the Roman Empire, and the Roman Empire was not always the most tolerant of Christianity. At one point, eventually later on in, in the Roman Empire, it becomes illegal. So all the churches undergo insane persecution and get imprisoned, get executed, get killed, just at random. Um, so these are, these are the circumstances that are happening right now as Paul is writing this. And he's saying to be patient during these hardships and trials and that the, that the church um, in Ephesus is going through. And he emphasizes unity among Christians. He um, says to be humble, gentle, and patient with each other, to be at peace with each other. It sounds like he wrote that for us with everything we have going on right now. Because we're stir-crazy, we're bored, we're restless, we're easily irritated, we're worried, all of these things. Um, and for you guys who would normally be in school right now, you guys are at home. You guys normally wouldn't spend, you know, from eight to three, you normally wouldn't be at home with your parents and with your little siblings. So you're in close quarters all day long and you might be getting a little, you know, tensions might be rising a little bit. You might be getting sick of that. I had a family of, there was, a, I had a family of eight in high school. I get that. Trust me. Um, and it's easy to get sick of that and just get irritated and not be patient with each other, not be united and just, you know, you'll just bump heads with everybody in the house. Um, and that's, you know, that's what a lot of people are having to deal with right now. 
Uh, Romans 12, 12 says something similar to what Paul said in Galatians. And that is um, rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation, and be constant in prayer. And Paul wrote this to the church in Rome um, under similar circumstances as the church in Ephesus. They were endure enduring persecution and hardships and all these things. But again, he emphasizes patience. Um, and then at the end of it, he says, also to be constantly in prayer. Right now, we have a chance to do that. We have a chance to be consistently praying throughout the day. We have a chance to really get into our word and study and really dive into our relationship with God. We've talked so many times about, you know, life just keeps us busy. We are always in a hurry going from one thing to the next. You know, you wake up, you go to school, you come home, you do homework, get a tiny bit of free time, you go to bed, start over Monday through Friday. Sometimes Saturday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you get a little bit more free time. Uh, but right now, that's all changed. You guys are doing homework online or you're doing homework packets. You know, you're doing your chores at home and that's about it. So, you know, Netflix is a thing right now. Video, extra video games are, are happening right now. And just trying to find time, find ways to fill your time and keep yourself entertained, while we can't be going out, you know, going out and about and all of these different things. So I want to challenge you guys, at least take a little bit of time each day to pray about the whole situation with the quarantine, however it's affecting you or maybe some friends or family that you have that are affected by it. You know, a lot of people aren't able to work right now. Um, a lot of places, a lot of businesses close up shops. A lot of people are trying to figure out how to make money. Um, other people are sick, you know, other people got the coronavirus and some are at risk. Some are worried about being at risk and are scared to go out and get stuff that they need. Uh, so be praying for that. And remember, you know, while it's affecting us and it's super inconvenient for us to have to be stuck inside and, you know, be limited on how much we can be outside and the six feet apart rule and all of these different things, right? That's for everybody right now, like especially the state of California, everywhere, the entire country, the entire world is going through this in some degree or another. It's not just us who are dealing with this. Um, so everybody's tensions are running high. We saw the panic buying this last week or so, the last couple of weeks. You know, everybody is just ravaging the store for everything they can get. Um, so just be patient towards one another and loving towards one another and pray for yourself, for others affected by this as well. God will provide through this and work through this crisis in ways we couldn't have imagined. And I've already heard stories of just cool ways of people getting provided for in, in ways that they couldn't have ever expected. And during this time, you guys, I'd really encourage you to read your Bibles and take some time to really study and focus on that. Before you watch TV or turn on video games for hours on end, sit down. Take a little bit of time to spend with God, spend with our Heavenly Father. Um, over the next few weeks, however long we are doing kind of the virtual thing, um, we'll be, I'm going to be talking about this and kind of talking about some practices that we can, that we can, uh, that we can do, uh, one, to stay connected with each other, but also dive deeper into the Word and deeper into our relationship with God. We have all of this time now. We have so much more free time. Um, so I really want to pursue this and, you know what, let's take, let's take faith to the next level. We've been so busy with just how life always goes. And now we have a chance to really dive deep and take advantage of this time rather than just, you know, spend it on trivial things and just, you know, learning or just just entertaining ourselves and keeping ourselves from boredom. Now we have a chance to really do something with this time. So I'm praying for you guys. I hope to hear from you. You know, text me, call me, um, maybe text me to schedule a call just in case. Um, like I said, add me on Instagram. We can do a we can do like a group. I know we can do a group video chat on Instagram with a few of us at a time. Um, I'll be in touch about maybe using Zoom at some point. Um, I'm praying for you guys. Love you guys. Reach out. You can reach out via email as well. Um, and I will uh, talk to you guys soon. Later.